When a box like this arrives in the mail, you might think, ooh, minimalist. Or you might think, what the heck is this? Before we get any further, how do you pronounce this? Is it Zach? Is it Zake? Is it Zake? Is it Zaki? I'm going to call it the Zake. This is the Zake. Did I, did I decide on Zake? I think so. Yes. This is the Zake M4. It comes from the factory with a pre-installed screen protector, dust and bubble free. In fact, I didn't even know it was there until I tried to put on this case and then the edges started popping up. This comes with 64 gigabytes of internal memory. There is also an SD card slot. Now, according to Amazon, you can install a 128 gig card in here. According to the box, you can put a 512 gig card in there. Uh, I have a 128 gig card and that works fine. However, it doesn't really matter what kind of card you put in there because it will only index the first 4,000 songs. The M4 comes with a charging cable, these terrible earbuds, and a stereo patch cord. When it comes to bundled earbuds, I am never optimistic, but these are worse than usual. One side sounds quieter than the others. And yes, I tried switching them up, and it's not my ears. I tried switching to a different set of earbuds, and that worked. So it's not the player. It's these terrible earbuds. There is no explanation why they include a stereo patch cord. Now, I'm guessing that it's to be used as a radio antenna when you are listening to FM radio with Bluetooth earbuds or speakers. According to the specifications, this is a 4.7 inch screen. They claim you can listen to lossless music for 50 hours on this thing. I just don't see how that's possible. Unless you disable the screen and listen to volume at the lowest level, I think you'll get more like three hours of playback. They include a couple of sample videos on this, but nobody's going to be watching movies with this thing. And believe me, I mean, I know that in the review, the screen looks decent, but it doesn't look this good in person. It comes with the usual assortment of apps, but nobody cares about the apps except for the music player and maybe the radio. You have to choose between the internal and the external memory. Now, when you switch to the external memory, the SD card, it takes forever to index, and you just kind of have to keep tapping the screen so it doesn't time out. Because if it times out while it's indexing, you have to start all over again. But like I said, it's only indexing in the first 4,000 tracks. I, I think you can still get to the tracks that it doesn't have in the index, but how do you know which ones they are? And if you do a play all, it's not going to play the tracks it doesn't see. So this is really a poor implementation. Now it looks like it's 100% completed, still chugging away, and it's done. The manual says it will only index the first 4,000 tracks. However, looks like it really indexed 4,001. That changes everything. No, the screen just timed out, so I had to power back up, and now I have to index again. Mm. This has the combination of a poorly reactive touchscreen and slow navigation. So if you choose a menu item, you're just you're not sure if you if it's slow or you didn't hit it right. And it looks like it was just slow. That's how long it took to start. However, if the track is playing and you want to do something in the background, it's even worse. It's barely usable. It's not usable. I, I refuse to use it. I'm trying to think of something nice to say about this player, but really the best thing I can think of is that it comes pre-installed with a screen protector and then the case fits well. That's not good enough. I would not recommend this to anybody. I, one star. I, I have never given a one star rating before. I, I don't think I've given I don't think I've ever given a one star rating. But I this is awful. Oh, I thought of another good feature. The battery life is so bad it will put you out of your misery faster. It doesn't change anything. And then everything just timed out, so